digital disruption in the UAE with Dubizzle. The latest buzz in the world of technology and innovation with the UAE's latest homegrown unicorn. Right, let's go chasing unicorns if we can because uh, plenty uh, going on out there in the business community. Uh, just in terms of context, uh, Richard and Brandy, what constitutes a unicorn company? Something that has raised a billion dollars in financing, or is valued now at a billion, usually due to financial raising, isn't it? it, it unicorn is billion. And I remember talking with uh, someone who's created a, a unicorn here, um, Madassa at uh, Kareem. He's the CEO there. And they sold that for $3 billion. And he introduced me to the phrase, I want, he said, I want to see more unicorns in the UAE. Mm. Of course, uh, you know, uh, Dibizzle Bayou is a unicorn as well. Um, but I also want to see more centicorns. Oh, yeah which is a $100 billion company. And there's a decacorn as well. There's a decacorn. Yeah, and I've also just found out this morning there's a hectocorn. Not as catchy. Um, a hectocorn is a company valued at over 100 billion, so you've got to go some to get a hecto, haven't <laughs> you? Uh, but uh, certainly uh, any uh, uh, unicorn worth its uh, value is looking at uh, increasing its uh, valuations. Uh, but what's it like working in a unicorn company, a question that gets asked a lot, especially of our next guest, uh, the finance director at Beut and Dubizzle is, of course, Nicholas Mejou, who joins us live on the line and also live via Microsoft Teams. Nicholas, thanks so much indeed for your time. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Listen, um, unicorns is a phrase that we use and bandy around so often now. And they are, I think it's fair to say, companies that have helped to shape the modern business world, the modern world, if you like, um, uh, companies that have made all of our lives a little bit easier. But now it's sort of part and parcel of everyday parlance. What do you think are the traits, the common traits, if you like, of a, uniform, a unicorn company? Uh, I think, um, I mean, I guess, I guess being, getting to a unicorn, there's a whole journey before getting there. Uh, when we say unicorn, I think it's it's uh, a validation of a company's um, initial sh initial success and and the creation of of that value that it's that it's been able to build. If we talk about um, how it got there, I think when you when you talk to um, uh, founders and and companies that have had uh, I've got to unicorn status. I think you, you, you talk to people and founders that have, have had a good combination of vision and ambition, I think is always uh, an important trait and a common trait you'll find in, 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 in those people. Uh, also, uh, people that have, have understood that they can't do everything themselves when it reaches, uh, companies reach a certain point where they need to uh, surround themselves with the right people to push that vision and, and scale and execute uh, on what they want to do. Um, and also, um, I think uh, by speaking to a few people in that space, it's just a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, putting, uh, putting, uh, rolling up your sleeves, a lot of uh, sleepless nights, ups and downs, and uh, I think everybody will tell you, uh, it's just uh, you have to put in the work to uh, to get to uh, to that position. Uh, Nicholas, I know that you and the rest of the team at Bayot and Dubizzle are very, uh, uh, very used to people referencing the sort of unicorn status of Bayot and Dubizzle. I mean. Uh, what do you are, are you okay, are you okay with that phrase still at the moment, or do you wish people would sort of move on and go look? We're more than a unicorn. Yeah, I think for for us, it's definitely not an end all. I think it's good, and when when we reach that status, we said okay, um, it validates what we've done. We paused maybe for a day <laughs> and said <laughs> and and appreciated the uh, the uh, that validation. Uh, but then there's still a lot to do, right? It's it's just a, for us a platform to then uh, a lot of future growth, uh, and that's what we're focused on uh, at the moment. In terms of trying to achieve that status, and advice for others, for for somebody who's who's been there, done that, um, has has your opinion changed, or has your advice changed in terms of when companies should go to market to get? investment funds for themselves or does that remain the same i think um i mean 
most companies, a lot of people will will use savings, uh, family bootstrap uh, operations. Again, that will get you uh, so far. I think a company reaches a point where then it needs external funds. And I think anybody uh, that starts a company should early on uh, reflect on what kind of people uh, they want uh, investing uh, with them or, or what kind of stakeholders they want uh, surrounding their business, um, if, especially if there's a partner involved and there's other people, other founders involved. It's going through a lot of what-if scenarios and making sure that even in, in short-term decisions, there's always that long-term vision that's respected. So I think it's it's uh, making sure the, the, the conversa conversations are, are had early on and getting the right people on board that match uh, your vision and, and what you want to do with the business. And I love the fact you sort of referenced the one day that everyone celebrated all things unicorn, but then you know it's back to work and let's go again and see build, build, build. So just in terms of that, in terms of the Bayot and Dubizel focus, we're, we're fast approaching the end of 2021. What's the focus for financial investments for the company, for the brand towards the end of this year and halfway through next year? Yeah, very clearly for us, it's just continuing to uh, to focus on end users, uh, making sure uh, we build products that facilitate uh, their transactions, either uh, if that's uh, looking for a house, looking to sell a car, looking to buy or sell a phone. Um, it's making sure we're part of that journey and facilitate uh, and get rid of the friction around that. So we're looking at a lot of product, a lot of tech product to support that. Uh, and what that means is uh, people, uh, either people in, in on, on, on the tech side, obviously, but also uh, operationally, just to make that happen, especially when you're looking into uh, facilitating a convenience, looking into logistics, so uh, moving goods from, from buyer to seller, and also looking at payments uh, and facilitating that aspect, which is always a bit of a friction when uh, when people um, transact on, especially on secondhand goods. So for us, it's it's investing in people. Uh, we're looking at uh, doubling our workforce uh, by next year, uh, and it's a timely question because we're we're right into our budgeting process for for 2022. Uh, so we're looking at a lot of growth, a lot of uh, things to uh, to roll out um, and investing in people uh, to, to get us there. Constantly innovating. Uh, that's what Bayot and Dubizel do and have done uh, since they were formed. Uh, that's why they are the first homegrown tech unicorn here in the region. Uh, Nicholas Majur, thank you so much indeed for your time. Nicholas is the finance director down there at Bayut and Dubizel. Interesting that we're talking.